YouTube, it's Zoe, and welcome to my first vlog of the Owl's Magical Readathon. <laughs> If you don't know what this readathon is, if you haven't heard of it before, it is hosted by G from Book Roast, so I will include her announcement video down below in the description if you want to hear her explain it instead of me. But basically, it is a month long readathon during the entirety of April that is inspired by the owls' examinations in Harry Potter that they take in their fifth year. G went above and beyond with this readathon and she made these pamphlets that look super official. Also, I printed them off on fake parchment paper because I am as extra as G is, apparently. There are 12 classes at Hogwarts, Ancient Runes, Arithmancy, Astronomy, Care of Magical Creatures, Charms, Defense Against the Dark Arts, Divination, Herbology, History of Magic, Muggle Studies, Potions, and Transfiguration. And she has assigned a different book prompt to each class. So for example, for Ancient Runes, you should read a retelling, for Care of Magical Creatures, read a book that has a land animal on the cover, and so on and so forth. Again, I will list her video down below. It has links to all of these pamphlets. There are two different ways to complete this readathon. The first way is to try and get a certain score on your OWL examinations. So if you read two books that fulfill prompts or pass two exams, you get an acceptable. If you pass six exams, you get exceeds expectations. And if you read nine books or more or pass nine or more examinations you get an outstanding. She also added and this is my favorite part wizarding careers. Look at this. Are you kidding me? She made this with her own two hands. It looks so official. This is the entire list of careers. I'm not going to list them all off because there's a lot of them. If you can see right here each career has a minimum requirement for past owl examinations. So if you want to be a curse breaker, for example, you need to pass ancient runes, arithmancy, charms, defense against the dark arts, potions, and transfiguration. There are also newt examinations coming up in August. And how you do on your owl exams influences what you can do for your newt's exams. Wow. Wow. I thought long and hard about which career I wanted to have post Hogwarts and I read all of these multiple times. I, I think I put more thought into which career I wanted to pick than what I wanted to major in in university. <laughs> This is really serious for me. I loved the idea of being a seer like Trelawney, but you only have to pass three exams for this, and I wanted something a little bit more challenging. I was thinking about being an alchemist, if I can find that right here, because you have to pass all of the exams. You have to read 12 books. Also, there's someone at my house now. I'm gonna stop talking for a little bit because it's a stranger. Okay, it's been a couple of minutes. Um, he's gone, so. We're all good. We can start again. Ha ha ha. Well, um, I was talking about the careers. So I was thinking of being an alchemist because it's the most challenging one. You have to complete all of the owl examinations. So you have to read 12 books in all of April, which I could do, um, definitely. But also when newts come along, I actually calculated how many books you have to read for each career and I think it was 19 you have to read for the newts. I don't want to stress myself out even more than I'm already stressed, just naturally. Also, realistically, if I was a witch, I wouldn't really want to be an alchemist, I don't think. So I was going through these thinking, if I went to Hogwarts, what would I want to be? And Seer obviously sounded pretty interesting, but not challenging enough. I liked the idea of being a Hogwarts professor, especially if I was a professor in Charms. I would push Flitwick out of the way and I would be the new Charms professor. Also the head of the Ravenclaw house, but I wouldn't do that to Flitwick. He's too good for that. And then I came across Ministry Worker. I would be obviously working post Harry Potter, so either Kingsley Shacklebolt would be Minister of Magic, or if you follow Cursed Child, then it would be Hermione Granger, and I'm fine with either of those. And guess what's at the Ministry? The Department of Mysteries! I could be an unspeakable, I could work with the prophecies, 
So, I mean, a lot of them are destroyed, but whatever. I could work in the love room or the brain room. It sounds so interesting. I don't even know what my entire job would entail because unspeakable. It's a mystery. Also, the minimum requirement is reading five books. So I was thinking that I would go for the dream career, I would be an unspeakable and do unspeakable things, and then I could also add an extra challenge and try to complete all of the prompts. So try to read 12 books, reach for the stars, even if I don't, if I only read five, guess what? I can still be an unspeakable. It's the best of both worlds. So that's the career I'm going for for now. Let me know down below if you're going for a career, which one, because I think it's so interesting to see who's drawn to which one. There's so many different options. So it's really about if they're going for a challenge or if they're going for a dream career or I I think it's so interesting. I think this entire readathon is so interesting. It gives me a sense of accomplishment and it gives me something to strive towards and also it's Harry Potter themed. I haven't really figured out a solid TBR yet. My goal for this readathon is to try and get some books off of my TBR shelf. I have so many we'll go over here to my TBR shelf but I have so many great books on my TBR that have been on there four years. I haven't read Truth Witch, I haven't read Illuminae yet, any of these. Oh my, I haven't read The Night Circus yet and Hannah keeps yelling at me to read it, but I keep on defying her and our friendship is crippling because of it. There's Strange the Dreamer, so many different books that I've just been saving for later, saving for the best time and it's getting ridiculous. So that is the goal of this readathon. I don't want to buy any books this month. I don't even want to get any books from the library. I just want to focus on what I already have and finally whittle down the TBR a little bit more. So what I did in the same Google Doc over here is I sorted through my entire TBR. For each prompt, I listed every single book on my TBR that could hypothetically fit the prompt. Some of them I had to stretch a little bit, like is a bird a land animal? It's a terrestrial animal, but it flies. So I don't know. Also, would magical creatures count as a land animal because it is care of magical creatures. I'm not sure, but I did see G from Book Roast. I saw her TBR and even she stretched the prompts a little bit. So I feel like this entire readathon is pretty flexible. I think that this form of creating a TBR, just seeing which books fit it and then picking from those, not making a solid TBR just yet, is best for me because I am a mood reader. I know if I make a solid TBR, I will want to rebel against it. It will start to feel like required reading and I won't have as much fun than if I just pick a book that speaks to me at that current moment. The thing is though that I only have one book on my entire TBR that fits astronomy which is to have the word star in the title. That is The Sun is Also a Star by Nicola Yoon. Yes, I have not read this yet. Also, guess what? I only own one book on my TBR that starts with an R. That's the prompt for Defense Against the Dark Arts. It is reducto, read a book that starts with an R. And guess what? That book is Ruin and Rising, the third book in the Grisha trilogy. I haven't read the second book yet. So that means I need to read the second book as well to get to this one. Luckily, the potions prompt is to read a sequel, so that can also fit Siege and Storm, but I didn't really want to read this this month. I did need to read it sooner or later. It just turns out that I have to read it sooner. This is getting me to actually confront some of my TBR. So I'm not bitter. I'm just kind of salty. I think I'm going to show you all of the books on my TBR that fit each prompt. So maybe you can suggest which books you think I should read for each prompt. Also, I just wanted to sort them. For Ancient Runes, the prompt is to read a retelling.
The next class is Arithmancy, and the prompt is to read a book by more than one author. Illuminae by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. And then we have Autobiography, which is by Christina Lauren who is a person named Christina and a person named Lauren. Our next class we already talked about, it is astronomy and the prompt is to read a book with star in the title. The Sun is Also a Star by Nicola Yoon is the only one I have, but I am excited to read it, so we're all good here. And then it's time to take the Care of Magical Creatures exam, and the prompt for that is to read a book with a land animal on the cover. This is one that I stretched to the limit to get as many books on my TBR. You might not be able to see the animals right on the front cover. Some of them are kind of hidden in the details, like right here there are some birds, and some of them are on the back cover. Our next class is a class that I think would be my favorite if I actually went to Hogwarts, Charms! And our prompt is inspired by age lines, so read an adult book. The next exam we have to take is for Defense Against the Dark Arts. I talked about this before, but it is inspired by the spell Reducto, and that means to read a book that starts with an R, and the only one I have! Ruin and Rising by Lee Bardugo. Next up we have Divination. I've always had a soft spot for this class because of Trelawney, and also it just sounds like a lot of fun. Together we shall cast ourselves into the future! The prompt for this class is to read a book set in the future. We have Scythe by Neil Schusterman. This is the bookmarked book club book of the month. This one will get read. We also have Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. And we have More Happy Than Not by Adam Silvera. This is a near future book. Alrighty then, next up is Herbology, and that is to read a book with a plant on the cover. It's time for History of Magic, my friends, with Professor Binns, and he has assigned for our exam to read a book that is more than 10 years old. So I have a lot of classics, and I've read a few of them before. I was just in the mood to read them again. For Muggle Studies, we have to read a contemporary. For Potions, it is next ingredient, read a sequel! And our last class is Transfiguration, read a book that either has sprayed edges or a red cover. And again, I stretched this so that if there's some red on the cover somewhere, there we go. <laughs> this has a red spine, I promise. There is red on the cover. <laughs> And then my only book with sprayed edges is Six of Crows. Or I can just spray the edges of any book I choose. 
that works as well as a loophole because i am a mess i depend on organization so much so i printed off the little pamphlet so i can refer back to it later i have my massive google doc and i also have my bullet journal april's color is green i also got a metallic pen and I got some glitter glue but the part that I want to show you is my owl readathon spread I printed off the pamphlets again but I made them fancy this time I burned the edges and I also stained it with coffee except I stained it after I glued it in here and it transferred here you can't really tell yeah you can here are the book prompts and here is my career page but my favorite thing that I did for the readathon is right here I, again, I did more of the parchment paper and the burning of edges. I was having a lot of fun. I used my typewriter to make little potions bottles labels. So I did a different potions bottle for every single class. And when I finish that class, I'm going to fill the potions bottle. And here's something that I do every single month. It's currently reading. So whenever I start a book, I will write it down. I will also assign a color to each book because I do daily reading counts. Each day, I color in how much I read with the color that is assigned to each book so that I know how long I've been reading a book, how many pages I read of that book each day. I put the total number of pages here, and then I total them up at the end of the month. The last thing I have right here is my April haul. I'll write down whether I bought a book. Wait, I, I messed up in how I wrote this. It's supposed to be bought borrowed scent but I put scent bought scent which is completely wrong I was filling out my bullet journal last night while I was watching Dairy Girls and I was very distracted the books that I borrowed from the library I will fill the circle in once I return them it's a lot of organization it helps me keep my life in order I also have a habit tracker I have an area where I can do video ideas and I have my daily planner I have other things that I track like I'm trying to read hopefully 100 books in 2019 so I did this typical reading journal thing where I made a giant bookshelf and then I fill in each book up here I can also see how many books I read each month I love to color code and I love to track everything because if I don't track it if I don't write it down then I will forget it anyway that's my bullet journal in case you wanted to also make a bullet journal spread for the readathon if you already have please tell me what you're tracking. Today is April Fool's Day. It is also the day of birthdays. It, of course, is Fred and George Weasley's birthdays, but even more importantly, it is my dad's birthday. So we're going to go out to dinner to celebrate a little bit later, but until then, I need to start editing my 24-hour readathon vlog. If you didn't know, two days ago, Saturday, I read for 24 hours and I vlogged the entire thing. It came out to five hours of footage. How did that happen? I talk too much, that's what happened. It already takes me a long time to edit a normal length video. This is going to take the rest of my life, so I should probably start editing it just chisel away at it a little bit each day until it is over. Happy bir- wow. We're at sushi for Dad's birthday. Happy birthday. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. Just kidding, April Fool's. <laughs> you haven't heard that before, have you? Hello, it is 9.30 on Tuesday, April 2nd. I did not read at all yesterday, and I have not read yet today. Really starting my readathon very strong. I'm finally ready to pick my first read of the readathon. I didn't even pick a first read yesterday. The first book I'm planning on reading is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. This I have owned since 2014 I think it was in one of my first book hauls and I still haven't read it five years but it's all about a night circus that disappears and reappears and there are two people learning magic and then they're going to duel to the death possibly I don't know do they fall in love I'm not really sure Celia and Marco 
I hope they fall in love. That'd be really nice. This can fit several prompts, but I obviously want it to fulfill one of the required prompts for the Ministry of Magic. For those, I think it can fit for charms because it is an adult book. It also, I mean, if you stretch the prompt a little bit, it can fit for transfiguration because red cover. The spine is mostly red, so I'm going to say it counts. Okay, I stretched that one a little bit too far, so I think I'm going to use this for Charms class. I'm really excited to start off the readathon with not only a book that has been on my TBR for so long, and my goal for this readathon is to get some books off of that shelf, but also it's a magical book. And it's the magical readathon! I am in such a Harry Potter mood, but I didn't want to read Harry Potter for the 77th time, so this is the next best thing. Charms is a first class that I am studying for, ha 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 ha. But it's already past 9.30. I should probably start reading. I got my tea and I got my cookie, but what I really want to show you... <gasps> These bookmarks that I got from Barnes & Noble. So we have the Cornish Pixie, we have the Thestral, the Mandrake, and the Hippogriff. They're so cute. I've never used magnetic bookmarks before. I'm really not sure if I'm going to like them because what I usually do, I use post-it notes, yay! I started these books like months ago and then I stopped reading them, so I haven't started them yet for the readathon. What I usually do with the post-it notes is that I will mark a post-it note when I start a section and then the second post-it note is where I finished reading for that day and I do that so that I know the number of pages that I read for my bullet journal chart. I have this little collection down here of fancy bookmarks that I've picked up as souvenirs or I've gotten as gifts. Haley actually got me these Pride and Prejudice bookmarks and they're so cute. But the thing is that I don't really like using fancy bookmarks. Oh look, it's my Tamagotchi. But I don't really like using fancy bookmarks because I'm so afraid that I am going to lose them or they're going to drop in the bath. I don't get my books wet, but sometimes I have gotten a bookmark wet and that's sometimes worse. <laughs> joining my vlog. So I am 119 pages into the Night Circus and I absolutely love it so far. It has such a unique atmosphere to it. It's set in Victorian times and part of it takes place in Victorian London. The magic system, just the way that anybody can learn magic if they have the right teacher, at least that's what I got from the book, is that anybody can be a magician. I think that there's a tragic romance brewing and I am ready for it. This needs to be made into a movie right now. I talked to Hannah last night because I stayed up until like 2 a.m. reading this book. I asked her if there is a movie in the works and she said the rights were bought in 2014 and apparently there is a director attached to the project also David Heyman who was a producer of the Harry Potter films he's also going to be a producer of the movie so I really want it to be very cinematography heavy because this is so immersive I feel like I'm there especially at the night circus oh my gosh I love Celia and Marco equally and I am not prepared for the ending because I feel like something bad is going to happen I'm gonna read again right now I don't know why I'm filming at this angle this is not comfortable. I just wanted to be with the cat, but then she ran away because my love was too much. Story of my life. It is Thursday and I am on my way to go drop off the books that I got from the 24 hour readathon. I'm going to return them to the library, but then I am going to go to the craft store. I'm going to go get some acrylic paint because I really, really, really want to paint the edges of the night circus. I am absolutely loving this book. Oh my gosh, I was not expecting it at all. I know that I've been told countless times from countless people, especially Hannah, for years. Oh my gosh, someone's calling me? Hello? Oh, it's a, it's a fake call. I was so excited for a second. It is 
like no other book that I've read. There are so many layers to this story. So we have the circus and then we have a magic competition. I don't really want to spoil anything because I went into it not knowing much except for the fact that there was magic and a circus. But there's a relation there's several relationships in here that I really enjoy I love all of the characters except for like two of them two of them they can leave I do not care about them at all but all the rest of them are so unique and they're not caricatures they all have a very mild personality and it's set in the 1800s and early 1900s it's all over the world the, the chemistry between some characters I am dying ah, and I love how magic works in here I so badly want to go to this circus so badly I need this to be a movie I, it reads like a Tim Burton movie I don't want Tim Burton to adapt it but it reads like his atmosphere it's all kind of whimsical but there's still some grit to it ah Oh, okay, um, but anyway, I love this book so much. I'm only 300 pages into it, but I know it's going to be one of my favorite books of the year, if not of all time. I'm, I haven't finished it yet, so I don't want to get too excited, but I am obviously too excited. So I want to make it my own. I want to paint the edges of it. But first, off to the library. Also, I've realized you've seen my hair four days in a row, and my hair has been very different curl patterns every single day. It's actually looking all right today, but I've been having such frizzy hair lately. Goodness. And now you can see the daily struggles of someone with curly hair. It's a nightmare. I just returned 16 books. Wow, I did not realize I had that many checked out, and that doesn't even include the number of ebooks and audiobooks I have checked out. Wow. And guess what? All of it cost me zero dollars. Support your libraries. As I was driving to the craft store, I realized that I never actually looked to see if we already had some acrylic paint, and lo and behold, we have acrylic paint. We have black and we have red, and those are the two colors that I wanted to use. Perfect! I even found a paintbrush, so I didn't have to spend any money. I'm so happy. I do not like spending money. <laughs> In other exciting news, I know I just said how I hate to spend money, but not when it's on something useful that's really cute cute that I don't already have and so I got more of those Harry Potter magnetic bookmarks. I got the Hogwarts professors this time and oh my gosh they're so cute. We have Lupin and Snape and McGonagall and Dumbledore who looks mad just like he does from the third movie on. I'm still using a bookmark to show where I started reading for the day but then I'm using the magnetic bookmark to keep track of my current page and I love him so much this festival I would die for him oh my gosh well I went to go take a picture of the night circus for Instagram and she just came and sat down on it she really is just one for the limelight aren't you honey bun I love you so much the diva It's 9.40 and I just got to part four of the night circus. It's getting better and better. Oh, <laughs> the thing that just happened right before part four, I was very happy with. It is very slow paced. Not a lot has happened plot wise in this book, I don't think. It's been a lot of atmosphere and getting to know each and every aspect of the Night Circus and getting to know each character who works at the Night Circus or is involved with the Night Circus and getting to know this whole competition from all sides. Now it is already 940 and I really want to paint the edges of this book. That means I'm going to have to stop reading for the night, but it's okay. I can make it last one more day. I have all of my supplies. I have the plastic plate and my paintbrushes and my paint, and I have my painter's tape to wrap 
around the edges of the book so that I don't get paint everywhere. I also have right over here, oh my gosh, it's so heavy, but I got my sister's kettlebell is that what they're called i don't know it's 10 pounds though so i think it's going to be good with keeping the pages nice and together so that i'm not accidentally painting between the pages i think that's all i need i hope it's all i need because i am ready to get to painting my plan is that i'm going to make this side red because it matches the red right there and i'm going to make the top and the bottom black first order of business is to wrap it in tape very old. Not sure if you can tell. This is disgusting. <laughs> no time at all except for trying to mix together this disgusting paint. I had two different things of black acrylic paint. I even opened up the new one but I think it's still pretty darn old. It just hadn't been opened before but both of them were disgusting. <laughs> so I think next time I might have to get new acrylic paint but I mean it worked in the end anyway. So old paint still works as far as I know. <laughs> so I'm going to let it dry for a couple of hours. It is now 10.45, but I usually go to bed pretty late anyway. It's been 15 minutes, but I am really impatient and I really just wanna see what this looks like. So I'm going to touch it like an idiot. Oh, this is so heavy, I'm so weak. This is what it looks like. Ooh, 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 a beauty. I've realized that special editions of books are cool. I think that graphic designers do such a good job of designing cool covers and adding new things, but there's nothing like personalizing a book and making it your own, even in just this simple way. So this is my first foray into making my books my own. I already highlight my favorite quotes in books, but now I can start doing this. It was so simple. Well, I haven't actually unstuck the pages yet, so that part's probably going to take way longer than painting it. Let's take this tape off. Oh my gosh, I'm so scared. I know I'm going to rip some pages. Oh no. <laughs> this is already so scary. Oh gosh, I don't like this. I don't like this. Never mind. I'm never going to deface a book ever again because the anxiety I am feeling right now. Woo boy. I feel like I'm doing surgery. Should I have waited for this to dry? Probably, but <laughs> do I ever listen to myself? That's a solid no. If these pages get ripped, I know they're ripped from love. Tough love, everybody. Oh no. <laughs> it's starting to rip. I got too excited. Woo. This is not the same shade of red at all. Oh well, it doesn't look terrible. It just clashes really badly. Ah, page one of 500, unstuck. That old paint was old. <laughs> this is just pathetic. Oh my gosh, it's all just coming off. The red looks good. Luckily, I found some more black paint. So I'm going to try again and maybe it'll stick this time, maybe not, but whatever. It is 12.40 right now and I'm going to do another layer of paint and then I'm just 
probably going to let it dry overnight and deal with it in the morning, but this is just so sad. This just shows you that new paint is sometimes worth the money. <laughs> Hello, it is a Friday and I just set up for bookmarked. Hello, Haley, Haley. Wait, it's not going on. There you go, hi. <laughs> Hannah is sick today, so it's just going to be me and good old Haley. We're talking about bookish pet peeves. Hello, Haley. Hey girl. Okay. <laughs> a superstar okay. beauty guru <laughs> wait what was the name of your beauty channel uh bright eyes 8833 oh my gosh she's made a comeback <laughs> um newsflash this still looks terrible i did another coat and it also peeled off i'm guessing because there was still some of the first coat on there i mean from a distance oh it doesn't look too bad but then you come closer and it's all disgusting. Wow, you want this book, don't you? <laughs> I ruined my book. <laughs> well, next time I know that I'm going to buy new paint if I try this again. I like the look of sprayed edges. Maybe I should have used spray paint. That is why they call it sprayed edges. Now this is definitely my book and no one will steal it. So, security measure. <laughs> I made some of my hazelnut hot chocolate coffee. It's really cheap mocha. It's good, by the way. You should try it. But I still have 120 pages left of this. We're already five days into this readathon, and I haven't even finished a book yet, and I've destroyed said book. And you've seen how boring I am day to day. I'm going to ignore everybody and read <laughs> like the boring lady I am. Happy Saturday everybody. We are on our way to Disney Springs here in Orlando. We're going to go see Shazam with Zachary Levi who I've had a crush on since Chuck back in the day and then he was in Tangled and then he was in Marvelous Mrs. Maisel and he's just been good at every age so I'm gonna go see him as a superhero. Also, I finished The Night Circus last night. You know how much I was loving it at the beginning? I didn't, I mean I didn't dislike it at the end. It was just, just a very unsatisfying ending. Things wrapped up a little bit too quickly. It was such a slow paced book and then at the end everything was like, okay, we'll just do this and this and this and this and everything's fine. And I just wish that there was more drama and more death, you know? <laughs> all in all, I think it was a pretty solid book. It's, I was thinking it was going to be one of my favorite books of all time. It's not that. Maybe one of my favorite books of the month so far because I've only read one book, but I, I gave it four out of five stars. I think the atmosphere is great. I still want to see it become a movie, but I would have made different changes to it. Then I picked up last night, I went to bed at like um, 3 a.m., but um, that's beside the point. But I picked up <laughs> The Sun is Also a Star by Nicola Yoon. This is my astronomy book. I know I was going to go through all of my required classes before I got to the special extra ones, but I really wanted to read this. I put in Dumbledore because he's the most astronomy one of the ones that I had. I don't know, his color scheme really fit the book, so that's why we selected Dumbledore for this. I think for every book, I'm going to pick a different bookmark. I don't know, it makes me happy, the little details, but I'm really liking it so far. I did, I've read the first 50 pages, put it down for some reason, but now I'm actually going to finish it. Wow, I think the same thing was the case with The Night Circus. I'd read the first 50 pages a couple of years ago, and then I put it down, and now I'm finally getting around to all of those books I've neglected. To all of the books I've put down before. That's the name <laughs> of this vlog. What are you currently reading? Another uh, Harry Dresden book. Oh, are you liking it? I just finished one of them today. I've actually read them all before. These are all rereads. Ah. No, I didn't. 
<laughs> That's a great Chewbacca. I think you win. <laughs> Two of these growing up because I outgrew them and I got another one. Should I get one for adult Sophie? I think yes. <laughs> Shazam, I really enjoyed it. I what does that say? Verse six. Zachary <laughs> Levi was great. Adam Brody, who was Dave. Dave! Yes, Dave Wazowski. No, no. that's Mike Wazowski. <laughs> I was on TV! <laughs> I looked it up, his name was Dave Rogalski, not, not Mike Wazowski. <laughs> <laughs> but he was in it. He was also in the OC and that's why he left Gilmore Girls and broke my heart forever. We saw uh, Captain Marvel two weeks ago when it first came out. Yeah. And I actually like Shazam a little bit more enjoyment wise. I really, I like Brie Larson, but I, the movie was just like, mm, it was, it was good. It was a good lead up to Avengers Endgame. Captain America, he's gonna die and I'm gonna be oh, so sad. No. no. <laughs> It's magic, you know. You're weird. <laughs> Welcome to Sunday, everybody. It is 6.30 and I haven't started reading yet today. Wow, surprise, surprise. I get all of my reading done at night. I should probably start reading during lunch and stuff like that, try to integrate it more into my day, but for now, this is my habit. I personally love Sundays because I love to refresh and prepare for the next week. So I do my laundry, I even washed my makeup brushes. Who is she? A girl with her life together, apparently. I cleaned my bedding and I vacuumed and I did a whole bunch of stuff. I think I'm going to do a little bit of a spa night. I think I'm going to redo my nails because I haven't done my nails in two weeks and oh by the way yeah two weeks and my nail polish still looks pretty nice i use the sally hansen miracle gel i don't know but it lasts forever i think i'm going to do a face mask and maybe a bath bomb i'm feeling a little fancy tonight and i have my book over here i only got 60 pages into The Sun is Also a Star. I am really liking it so far. I forgot that it switched perspectives and I really enjoy that because you get to hear from people they meet on the street. You get to hear from all of the members of their family and even different histories of things. And I feel like I'm learning a lot. Daniel and Natasha are just two kids living in New York. The whole world does not revolve around them, although they're teenagers so they think it does, but there's more implications to their actions and everybody has their own things going on. I think I'm coming down with a cold or something. I'm just feeling very groggy and stuffy, so hopefully me pampering myself might make me feel better. I don't know. Also, I need to get my sleep schedule in order. I went to bed at 3 a.m. basically every single night this week, which is not um good for you. I just have a lot of trouble falling asleep and staying asleep. I have sleep paralysis, so a lot of the time I will wake up in the middle of the night and I will think that there's somebody in my room. I got some melatonin though, so hopefully it'll work. Hopefully I can become a functioning human again. Stay tuned for episode two of Zoe's really interesting life. <laughs> I've read a total 30 pages of The Sun is Also a Star tonight because I'm killing it. Also, I'm wearing my Great British Bake Off shirt that my sister got me and my Harry Potter socks. So, 
I'm feeling great right now, but I'm going to do a sheet mask. Sheet masks still kind of freak me out a little bit. The act of putting them on my face is so uncomfortable because it's so slimy. I got these sheet masks from Costco. This one is a honey nourishing mask. Oh, it's so ooey and gooey. It smells really good. Oh, it's so cold. I took it out of the fridge. Oh, hello there, ladies. I look like Dwight in that episode of The Office where he cuts the face off of the CPR dummy. Do I pull it off though? <laughs> no. I don't know if you knew this, but I used to have absolutely terrible skin. I had cystic acne and it was not fun at all. I was very insecure about my skin. So I went on Accutane, which is the strongest acne medicine that you can go on is prescription. You need to get blood work regularly to make sure that all of your blood levels are fine. You can't get pregnant when you're on it because it can negatively affect the fetus. So my relationship with my skin has been, oh, I just, just got in my mouth, disgusting. <laughs> my relationship with my skin has been an uphill battle. I have freckles and acne scars and wrinkles. I have dry skin and I still get acne. Whoever said that you stop getting acne after you're done with puberty um, is a dang liar. By the way, if you have a skincare regimen, please let me know down below because I'm trying to develop a skincare regimen. It seems like everyone has one. So basically, I'm just here to say all of you teenagers out there, all of you people out there who are going through some skin issues and are just not happy with the way that your skin is, I totally understand and I very much sympathize with you. It's really difficult in this age of social media and especially Instagram where everyone has perfect skin. I hope we both can get confident in our own skin because we deserve it. We all deserve it self-confidence. Let's do this thing. Let's also drink some water and do some face masks because they feel so good. Eleven forty-five. I was planning on going to bed early, but I mean for me this is pretty early. <laughs> I think it's time to end the vlog. I didn't read as much as I was planning or hoping to, but all in all pretty successful week. I really enjoyed the night circus. That was 512 pages long I believe. I am 175 pages into The Sun is Also a Star and I'm really enjoying it. I love Daniel and Natasha. They are definitely opposites attract but they each have such strong personalities. Usually when you get dual perspective they're both like kind of sassy or they have similar compatible personalities but these two people have different ideologies and different stances on love. I'll put my total page count so far here on the screen. I only completed one class so far for my owls but I am halfway through astronomy. If you're also doing this readathon let me know down below how is your readathon going? How much have you read? Have you finished any classes? What career are you going for? Thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you all soon in my next video. Bye!